Top of the morning to you. This is Ty. Welcome to the internet. Today we are starting a new series, kind of in the premise of history, uh, just because it's what I like to watch. Um, and I just always find there's always something crazy that goes on with history, and just because it lends a good insight into the future as well. Um, so this one it's called Running the Gauntlet. Um, I've always heard that term. I kind of know what it is, but I don't really know exactly kind of where it came from and really too much about it. Um, so let's figure it out. And again, of course, the link in the description will always be down below and you could watch it there. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will just get started. The verdict is final. The comrades have formed an alleyway. Filled with fear of what lies ahead, the man moves forward, hesitantly, and finally steps between Ooh. the rows of pikes. His comrades lift their weapons, and with every step, the man suffers their severe blows in his side. Shrouded in pain, he staggers on Jeez. until he eventually falls. Uh. He ran the gauntlet. God, that would suck so the bad. The expression running the gauntlet does not refer to the protective like the art cloths style. of medieval knights, as one might oh, this think, video. but to the Swedish word gatlop, but the, the gauntlet compound would gatlop, suck. lane, and lop, course. It referred to a traditional form of punishment in which two lines of people beat a person forced to run between them. Nowadays, we find expressions such as to pass through the line or to run the gauntlet in news articles where they refer to people who have to overcome a series of difficult trials and who were subject to sharp criticism. But let it sink in that these expressions keep alive the memory of one of the most brutal forms of punishments in history. Yeah, I guess it was really common, especially in the military, uh, just as kind of a form of one public humiliation uh, amongst your you and your comrades uh, and really as an ultimate sentencing or almost execution i guess the version of this form of punishment practiced by the german landsknechts in the 16th century was particularly spectacular they were, hmm. however, not the first to use it. Spectacular. Rutschmidt Wiegand has noted that the ancient Romans already practiced a similar punishment called Fustuarium. The Landsknechts Court of Pikes in German Spießgericht enforced martial law collectively. The entire Landsknechts community judged offenders. Hmm. Whenever a new Landsknechts regiment was recruited, this court system had to be approved by both the employer and the Landsknechts themselves. Once a court of pikes had been initiated, it was strictly required to be completed within one day, and there were only two possible outcomes, acquittal or capital punishment. Oh, the wow. latter was carried out by running the gauntlet. The court of pikes was called only in cases of particularly serious offenses, such as disregarding the order of the regiment or dishonoring the regimental flag. Wow. In contrast to, for example, death by hanging, Death by the pikes was considered honorable. Nevertheless, so I don't, I the court of pikes disappeared that. little by little in the second half Where of the 16th like century. Let's look at it in detail. Any sort of capital punishment, like some are more, I guess, less humiliating. Um, but I guess it also depends on which culture you're currently in of what is acceptable in terms of honorable ways to go. Detail based on an account written by the military writer Leonard Fronsberger in his Kriegsbuch from 1573. Kriegsbuch. Before initiating the process, the provost, who was responsible for law enforcement and prosecution in a Landsknecht's regiment, asked the commander and the assembled community for their approval and their consent to proceed. Then the provost had to request the death penalty three times. Similarly, the accused asked for mercy three times. Then the ensigns rolled up the flags of the regiment and put them into the ground, upside down. This symbolized their grief about the defilement of the regiment. It was one of the ensigns who asked for a verdict. Three groups of Landsknechts, each consisting of 41 men, then discussed whether the accused should be acquitted or not, before they finally gave a recommendation. 
Based on these three recommendations, the whole community decided the fate of the accused in a vote. If he was huh. found guilty, the Landsknechts immediately went to the place of execution and formed a lane of two rows in east-west direction, each consisting of three ranks, with the ensigns closing it on one end. Wow. The unfortunate victim begged them for forgiveness for his crimes, while the entire regiment also begged him for forgiveness. Before executing the sentence, the respective requests were granted in a symbolic ritual. Yeah, and if you didn't, if you were on the sides and you didn't like participate, then they'll probably just throw you in the center to run it too. Like. Finally, the provost gave him three hits on the right shoulder and reminded him, in the name of the Holy Trinity, to walk into the pike swiftly whereupon the comrades executed the victim with thrusts of their pikes. Whoever stepped aside to leave a gap through which the victim could escape should take his place. Yeah, when the wow. accused had fallen, the Landsknechts uh. knelt to pray, then regrouped and marched three times around the body, whilst the gunman fired three volleys in the name of the Holy Trinity. The to Holy conclude Trinity. the ceremony, Everything the provost called threes. the Landsknechts together, thanked them for a fair trial and reminded them to avoid similar misdeeds. Historian Hans Michael Möll uh, It definitely gets the point across when everyone participates that like, hey, don't step out of line because they'll just as easily throw you in there too. Underlines the symbolism and rituality of this form of martial law. Quote, the Court of Pikes seems to be most aptly described as a decidedly cooperative ritual act with cleansing character." End quote. Mm. The Spießgericht of the Landsknechts is rather spectacular, but it has been adopted many times since the 16th century, with much handier weapons such as ropes in various navies. In Prussia, stirrups did the job, and Native American tribes used sticks. From the 17th century onwards, rods from hazel or willow which were sometimes even salt grain, were used in most armies. Ooh. In those cases, the offender, Hans Tye, was forced to wounds. walk slowly along the lines, Ouch. while each of his comrades delivered one strike on his naked back. Depending on the verdict, some offenders had to run the gauntlet multiple times. If the victim fell and could no longer walk, he was either put on straw to receive the remaining strokes or allowed to rest until the next day only to face the continuation of his torture. The outcome of this punishment was often fatal as well. Yeah, just through infection, mainly. Like, jeez. Like, so much through history is just so brutal. Um, even today, I guess. But yeah, that is, that one be sure to Check San Roman down in the description below, and I will see you on the next one. Cheers.